All right, welcome to episode 11, I'll call it a mini episode of The Weight Room, where I just kind of went over a few basic questions that, you know, a few people had. I was uh, a guest on another podcast, and they let me kind of use their audio as well on The Weight Room. So what you're going to hear is basically just a a recording of, of that podcast where I answer a few questions about weightlifting. I think it'll benefit a lot of a lot of people out there that, you know, you want to start weightlifting, but you really don't know what to do, how to do it. You don't know the ins and outs. It's just going to be a really information-packed episode, so check it out. You hear me? Yep. How's yeah. it going? Cool. Pretty good. How y'all doing? We're good. Good. Do you go by uh, Daniel, Dan? Daniel, yeah. Okay, yeah. I just have to make sure because, you know, I'm Joseph, but, you know, I never go by that, so. Yeah. Yeah, different different people call me Dan, Danny, Daniel, so, but. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. But, hey, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, you know, our target audience is definitely a lot of high schoolers, and, um, you know, a lot of us are athletes and stuff. You know, I play lacrosse. He plays soccer. Our friend plays football. Couldn't make it to the episode today, so yeah. we thought it'd be great to you know ask you some questions, you know, just to learn a little more about how, you know to you know proper weightlifting, recovery, all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. How to unleash your potential. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, we just take, get some questions down if you yeah. wouldn't you know mind us asking. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. You want to go first? All right. Yeah, I'll go first. So um, the biggest question that I had was um, like, what's a consistent like weekly workout schedule? Because so, for personal, ga- like for personal or for sport or for whichever, which either one or what? Probably personal. Personal. Um, I mean, it kind of depends. Kind of each each individual is going to be on a different fitness level. You know, have different mm-hmm. experience. But once you kind of have that solid foundation kind of started, I would say working out four, probably around four times a week. Um, mm-hmm. And it depends, too, if you want to, like, be kind of like a bodybuilder type or if you want to build, like, strength for a sport. Um, Yeah, that's what I was leaning towards. Yeah. So, like, for sport, I know um, when I was – I actually did did an internship here at a a local high school uh, for the last year. And he – the strength coach there actually had had them on three days a week uh, total body – workouts which which basically mm-hmm. it's a it was a pretty cool system i've never heard about it before but apparently a lot of um colleges use it as well but what what they did was um so they would do like a full full body each each workout but you would do like lower body emphasis on on your first day oh then move down to upper body emphasis on your second day and then uh or i'm sorry total body lower body then upper body but so like let's just say for your upper body day your emphasis would be bench press. So that would be <laughs> your big lift for the day. And then you would move down to um your upper body or your lower body, I'm sorry. And so you would let's just say front squat. Um mm-hmm. but instead of front squatting, you know, because you just did legs the other day, so instead of front squatting super heavy, you kind of back that down a little bit and you still do a good set of front squat. But you, it's it's just not to the same kind of volume and intensity. And then for your for your kind of total body, you would you would even lower the intensity even more and do some type of like clean or something like that or deadlift something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think yeah, that- doing doing three to four days per week uh, is a really I mean for most people that's going to be a pl- plenty to do. You know, give yourself <laughs> some rest. Yeah. And I was also wondering, I saw on your Instagram that you were using a lot of uh, your bands. You were incorporating bands to workouts. Yeah. Um, and I do that a lot at my old gym because it was like there was an instructor they were telling us what to do. But I got my own gym membership. I've just been kind of off of my own. So I, mean, I haven't really used bands in a while. You think those, those are still beneficial? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as your, as your assisted um, accessory, excuse me, your accessory moves. So like I was doing – the other day I was doing like band pull aparts. Those are really good for, you know, your upper back. Uh, Mm -hmm. And there's just a whole bunch of other band, especially your lower body. Like you hit, uh, Oh yeah. You hit some squats and then you go right into maybe doing some type of um, like sidestep banded sidestep or clamshell or something like that to kind of 
it's going to still benefit your squat, but it's not going to tire you out for your next squat um, set. Mm-hmm. So just, okay. so just using, makes- using bands like that is a big thing too. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So this was another one because, um, so what happens is I drink a lot of, um, whey protein. So like my question was, that was like, how can you use like protein powder and like other things to like, create like the most muscle mass in like the least amount of time. You know what I mean? I would say probably just timing it right. So, um, and you, you probably have heard of the, uh, the window or whatever, the anabolic window or some type of window, nutrient window, something like that. There's a lot of different names for it. Um, and basically that just means it's, some people say it's probably between 15 minutes to an hour of whenever, after you're done working out, when you want to eat. Um, I think that's true to an extent, but right. don't, don't dwell on, oh my gosh, it's been 20 minutes and usually I eat within 15. Like it's not a yeah. huge deal, but definitely try to probably get, get a good, uh, serving of protein within probably 30 minutes to an hour after. All right. And then just kind of, um, another big tip for that is just spreading out your meals over the day kind of evenly. So don't, don't try to. Just get all your protein in at dinner. Yeah. And then, like, so I do, like, a lot of snacking sometimes, too. Is that, like, is that, like, some of the worst things you can do? Because, like, sometimes apple or something here and there. I mean, if it's good snacks, no. Because your body's, it's constantly burning. So if you're trying to build muscle, then constantly refueling it's going to be really good. I mean, I eat five to six times a day, so. Just, just get in your food when you can get it in. So, as mu- and not as much as you can, but if you're trying to put on muscle and put on size, don't. If yeah, if you're hungry, eat. If you're waiting until you're hungry to eat, you're probably a little bit behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got it. All right, you got another question, Joey? Yeah. So, when it comes to adding muscle, uh, a lot of people recommended that I start, you know, using creatine. And so this is the creatine I was using, the um, the monohydrate one. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people have been telling me to do different things. Some people are just saying just do one scoop every day just to get into your bloodstream. I've had a few people tell me that I start, you know, loading it up to like five scoops to like balance it out over a day. I didn't know if you knew which one would be better. I'm just, I've heard mixed opinions. Yeah. So there's actually a, a, um, a loading, I think it's called a loading cycle on creatine. Yeah. That, that's what, yeah. Yeah. So in it. All that basically does is gets it, like you said, it gets it in your blood, gets it in your muscle faster. If you just okay. took your your scoop per day, it would you would get the same benefit. It would just take a little bit longer. So, mm-hmm. honestly, that, that that was probably some kind of like selling or marketing thought of by the creatine, you know, company <laughs> because it gets you to buy more faster. So. Yeah. If you're not in if you're not in a rush to like do something for a sport or a competition or whatever it might be, then I would just go with the one scoop per day and then making sure you're drinking plenty of water with it. Um mm-hmm. and the thing about creatine is like if you eat plenty of meat throughout your diet, then creatine will benefit you, but it won't be as much as if somebody's let's say a vegetarian or they just don't have access to that much meat throughout the day, whatever it may be, because creatine is actually in meat. So the creatine you take in, like as a supplement, is good and it will help you, but it's not the it's not the end all be all to great supplements. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so so my next question was, um, is like, is there like any differences between like the proteins and like like the whey protein or like a protein bar or something like that. Like I, I just don't know if there's a difference in any of them. Um, kind of, you know, in not necessarily in the, in the type of protein it is, but mm-hmm. now there's, there's like a whey protein, like you said, and then there's another protein you've probably seen called Cassian that has um slow release. So what that is, is people take that like before bed because, that it'll kind of slow release throughout the whole night instead of just kind of uh, going straight to your system. Yeah. Um, but as far as like powder versus um, 
bars or whatever else goes. Um, I would say it's probably just a little bit more digestible, maybe quicker, quickly digested as a powder because uh, your, your stomach obviously doesn't have to break down kind of everything that's in the bar and then it just kind of streamlines right into your system a little bit quicker as a powder. Yeah. Because most of the times the powder is a fluid, right? Yeah, yeah. So anything anything you drink is going to get into your system a lot faster because it doesn't have to be broken down by your you know your stomach and all that. All right, all right. Um, this is like a. Uh, would you recommend any supplements for high schoolers to use? Um, as far as that goes, probably not really, simply mm-hmm. because. I don't want to say, hey, you should be using this and you should be using that because I can't like speak to each individual person. But yeah. some great supplements, I would say, are the ones you've talked about already. I mean, protein powder, um, creatine's a fine one to use. Like that one really doesn't doesn't have any negative side effects as far as like mass populations. Now, a certain person might have a reaction to it. Um, but those two are kind of the most common ones that you're going to see that probably really do have a pretty decent impact. Um, any other ones? I mean, maybe some BCAAs if you're if you're into that. But I mean, I don't mm-hmm. I don't know really how great those are, other than just kind of a fun thing to drink that tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as far as that goes, I would say those are probably my top two. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's like something about um like the actual like gym or something like that. I've been kind of confused like which is more beneficial, high weight and lower reps or low weight and higher reps. Like I've done both and I don't really know like what the difference is. Okay, that's a really good question. Um so it depends for your goal. So if someone's just trying to put on muscle, then they want to shoot for anywhere from probably 8 to 12 and it depends, like, each person's very, very different. Somebody might even go down to closer to the 6 range, but, like, 6 to 12 reps um, with a around, like, 75% um, of your, like, one one rep max is, like, the yeah. best or, you know, so far seen as the best for building muscle. Now, if you want to add a lot of strength, get really strong, um, you're going to want to shoot for about five reps or less. Uh-huh. And that, that's going to be, obviously, since you're doing fewer um, fewer reps, you're going to add that weight to the bar. And then for, <laughs> like, if you want to add power, which is another thing important for sports, you're going to do probably one to three, one to three um, reps. And that's just yeah. going to be, usually power's done with a little bit less weight because it's it's more about speed than it is about the weight itself. So, yeah. I would say, I would say it depends completely on your um on your goal. All as right, as far as that goes. So my goal is um probably just to add size. So you would say like the higher reps, but the lower weights. I would say, how much experience do you have with um with working out? Like how long have you been doing it? Um, for three years now. So that's a that's a pretty good amount of time. So, um, I would go probably. Anywhere from seven, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten reps. I wouldn't go into the eleven or twelve much anymore, simply because mm-hmm. you do have that experience. Up and you know, without knowing exactly your case scenarios and all that stuff. But um, yeah, and I would I would stick around somewhere between seventy five and eighty five percent of your one RM. All right. And do four to five sets of your main lifts. So like your bench, your squat, deadlift, uh, rope, like barbell row, stuff like that. Do four to five sets of that, and then kind of three to four of your other smaller lifts, like your uh, like push downs, curls, um, stuff like that. Your machines, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got you. And uh, another thing I saw on your Instagram was, uh, you know, that you can use your own body weight a lot, you know, to definitely, instead of using a machine, you can use your own body weight. I was wondering if you could, you know, explain a little bit more on that. Yeah, so during, especially during quarantine, I was not able to go to my gym, and Mm -hmm. it was pretty tough just to 
kind of get motivated and find a workout that was challenging and something that I wanted to do. And so I just kind of came up with a few body weight um, exercises that I found here and there a few a few different people that I've used programs from before, kind of cut them out, put them together, and it was just really hard. All the different variations of, I think I mentioned on their push-ups that, I mean, I couldn't even do like one single push-up of some of these variations, and I'm the type of person that's been doing push-ups literally since I was probably like 10, and not being mm-hmm. able to do one was like, wow, I'd had no idea that this could be so challenging. <laughs> like <laughs> these push-ups were like one arm, like one leg on the wall, jumping. It was just all sorts of crazy stuff that oh, was me, It's crazy. Yeah. And then different variations of pull-ups too. Um, <clears throat> pull-ups are obviously one of the exercises that a lot of people struggle with, but these variations were just ridiculously hard. <laughs> it was, it was like doing a regular pull-up and then you had to, um, uh, take your arms and instead of going up, you would go straight back and then back in. So I don't know how this, how this guy was doing it that I was watching the video on, but he was just pumping them out. Sounds weird. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. So like that was kind of like when you were talking about like how you didn't go to the gym and like how, like how'd you like stay motivated like during the quarantine? I feel like that was like one thing I really like struggled with. Yeah. Was like kind of up with it and staying consistent. I mean, it was, it was definitely tough. Uh, I've been working out pretty consistently for probably around five or six years. I've did a little bit before that, but not, not as serious. And during Mm -hmm. the last, I guess, what was it? March to June. I think it was June. Gyms opened back up here or July. One of the two, but I just didn't, I didn't have like a normal gym to go to. So I kind of just like did workouts here and there, sporadic, like different workouts. I'm used to being on a a strict program where I do, I know what I'm going to do each day. And I would go in to each day and be like, okay, what am I going to do today? So in a way it was kind of like, this kind of sucks. But in another way, it really opened my eyes to all the different types of stuff that you can do that that's out there that. I kind of probably knew about, but I never tried it. And some stuff I really had no idea what it was, and I got to kind of see it for the first time. I got you. Mm-hmm. That's good. So, like, if you're at home and, like, you don't really need, like, a bench set or something like that most of the time, right? Because, like, I have a bench set at my house, but, um, like, yeah, I don't. yeah, but there's, like, some days where, like, I'll use it, but then there's some days where I'll just do, like, strictly push-ups or something like that if I really want to get my chest going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, um, for the first three years of my, like I said, not so serious, serious lifting times, I didn't have anything but a pull-up bar. Um, oh, really? I had two 45-pound dumbbells and then, like, two 15-pound dumbbells. And I wouldn't say, like, I got big or got shredded or anything like that, but I got, like, I feel like I got in pretty good shape. I was decently strong for what I had. Uh, You know, I could, I could use my body pretty well. So you definitely don't need to get any fancy equipment to see something, you know, to at least keep up what you have. If you have to kind of go a while without going to the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got you. All right. You got another question, Joe? Yeah, this is more of a, uh, a personal question. What's your go-to thing to listen to when you're working out? Oh, okay. That's funny. Right now it's um there's a playlist on Spotify. It's called Two Thousands Alt Rock. And it's got uh-huh. like it's got like Green Day, um I'm trying to think of the other really popular band in there. Um hold on, let me look it up real quick. You're gonna you probably will will uh know a lot of these, but it's got like Blink one eighty two, it's got um just a lot of uh kind of not really like get you hype songs but it's like throwback songs where you're like singing along to it as you go you know yeah because like the, some of these some of these songs are like what the heck is this and then you hear it and you're like oh my god i can't i didn't even know that was the name of that song but you're just like jamming to it as you go <laughs> i'll check that out then 
Yeah, so it's called 2000s Alternate Alternative Rock, and it's got some freaking classics in it. <laughs> That's looking up right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking it up. Let's see what they got. The first song, Ocean. if you see it, is, yeah, Ocean Avenue. O- Ocean Avenue, and then Adam's song, Give You Hell, like those kind of songs. Yeah. yeah I'll definitely check that yeah, out. Yeah, I haven't listened to it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, there's definitely some, some throwbacks in there that you don't really hear that much anymore on the radio, and it's like, dang, I missed that song. Oh, <laughs> uh, any other question? Yeah, I was, I was thinking like, what, what do you usually like do the most at the gym? Because me, when I go to the gym, mostly I'll do like arms and abs because like, since I play like a sport that uses like my legs with soccer, so I don't really like do legs at the gym a lot. Is that like recommend you think I should like keep up with legs more or something like that? I mean, do you have a like in season program that you follow for, no, we for kinda, soccer? No, we just we just play a lot of the times. Most of the conditioning we do on our own. Okay. Um, then I would I would probably say doing some type of leg workout, you know, having mm-hmm. that and there it would definitely benefit you. Um as far as just you know, what, what moves your body are your muscles. So if you can move faster, if you can be more powerful, if you can, you know, be more, uh, controlled, that that's all going down to your muscles. So if you can train those muscles, you're just going to have a a little bit better control of your body and be a little bit more athletic with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's, that's a good way to look at it. I always looked at like, I always looked at like doing legs while making like while playing soccer, kind of like as buffing them up and kind of like making them like less mobile. I thought, yeah, yeah. a lot of people see see weightlifting as like making you a little bit m- less athletic. But if you can do it, if you can do it, the uh, sh- if you can work on your strength and your power, you won't really see that drastic of a size change, like in your in your actual mm-hmm. muscle. Now you'll see some just because you yeah. know you're lifting bigger weights, so your muscles have to adapt. But you're mm-hmm. going to you're going to see a lot of athletic benefits that um, that if you didn't do it, you would you would drastically notice a difference between you know each time period when you when you did versus when you didn't. So I would I would highly recommend doing some type of of leg leg workout, throwing it in you know once a week. Yeah, you'll definitely see some results there. All right, I'll definitely like get on to it. And uh, I just had another question, kind of going back to the creatine. Um, a few months ago, I used to drink amino acids, but I eventually just kind of stopped. I figured, I think I ran out and I just never got them again. I ended up just doing creatine. Would you say that there was any sort of benefits the amino acids offer that the creatine doesn't, or if they're both pretty similar? Um, I mean, they have very different benefits, but I'm not sure as far as like your own diet if you need them. <laughs> like somebody could could benefit from those amino acids. But they would, they probably wouldn't be the person that eats a somewhat of a well-rounded diet, like with their protein. So if they don't eat enough meat during the day, or they don't eat um, like protein bars or um, like whey stuff like that, I think the amino acids can be beneficial. But it's very up to that person. Whereas like act strictly drinking like a protein shake i think that can benefit pretty much anyone okay yeah yeah that makes sense yeah i was i mean like here was my thing with the amino acids i took amino acids as well probably around the same time he did or maybe even earlier than that but like someone told me that like amino acids they kind of make you like they kind of make you shit bricks (laughs) that's that's what someone told me and then like after he said that like i stopped you know if that's true (laughs) i mean that's I think it depends on the brand because and your own body getting used to it because there's a lot of a lot of people who have kind of that kind of reaction to creatine that oh, that creatine. like once they take creatine and they go work out it kind of makes their stomach just start churning. Um, oh. So I think it just kind of depends on how long you've been taking it, what's in it, do you have some tor- <laughs> sort of like reaction to it? Because there's oh. all, there's all kinds of um, like ingredients in those 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 powders and stuff that that give certain people like weird reactions. I mean, 
the most common one I think would be like pre-workout making people itch. I mean, I'm, I'm the worst with that. It makes my ears itch and my face itch, all that stuff. So, but then like the person working out with me has no effect on them. Um, that is weird. All right. Um, I was wondering because you know I used to work out a lot when I was sore. I would just kind of like slap on some uh, some like numbing spray just to kind of get rid of this pain. But yeah. you recommend doing that because I didn't, I never knew if it was you know good to work out if you're really sore. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend it because that's mm-hmm. kind of your body's sign saying take it easy. Um, now if you if you did a hard workout and you've waited two, three, four days and you're going back to do another workout that's not ne- not necessarily as hard, then I would say, okay, maybe it, it would actually be beneficial to do this workout, get your body, get your muscles moving, get them stretched out, get the lactic acid moving, all that stuff. Um, but it depends on each situation. But as far as like feeling sore versus feeling pain, I definitely wouldn't do it if there's any pain. If it's a if it's a little soreness, that's when you you kind of think, should I be feeling sore based on what I did? Okay, I should be. Let's go hit this workout. Maybe take it a little bit easier, just because you don't want to you don't want to do anything to cause any like, serious damage. But yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, I would probably say, if it's been two, three, four days, give it a shot at least. Okay. All right. Give me other questions. Um, I think I was all done with all the ones on my list. I see. I don't know if I have any more. Um, oh, this is just a, this is just a quick one. Uh, is there anything that you'd recommend eating quickly, like for a workout? You know, I feel like sometimes I'm running, just want to grab something really quick for you know get a quick workout in. Yeah, um, I would say eating something with like a simple simple sugar in it. So as weird as it sounds, maybe eating like a not a full full size candy bar, but like a just one of those, uh, what's it called? Bite size candy bars or like, uh, oh, yeah. uh, size ones. Yeah. Just like, uh, <laughs> something that has some type of like sugary thing in it, basically acting just like a pre-workout would just kind of give you a little energy going into it. Um, another thing you could do, uh, maybe 30 minutes before would drink like a protein shake. That'll usually give you a little bit of energy, a little bit, you know, some calories to kind of work with. Um, I definitely would stay away from like fatty foods because that's just going to like weigh you down. I would stay away from like greasy or fried foods, stay away from anything that has a lot of fiber in it, like, uh, vegetables, uh, fruits typically have some fiber, but then again, like it depends what fruit it is. If you're eating like, um, those fruit cups, that's probably going to actually be a good one because it just has a lot of sugar in it. Um, so I would go with something that has a little bit of sugar and then, Maybe if you can add something that has a little bit of protein as well, that would probably be your best bet right before workout. Okay. Makes sense. Can I answer that real quick? What? Can I add on to your question? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so, so would Gatorade be, like, something good to drink before workout? <clears throat> um, that's, that that's, wouldn't be the worst <laughs> thing. It wouldn't be bad. I mean, All I right. would probably go with a, a, some type of at least semi-solid food. Just because it a Gatorade might cause a little bit of uh, like discomfort right before you work out, just with oh. all the sugars and all the stuff. Like, like I kind of said earlier, like whenever something's in a um, in a uh, liquid, it moves through your body a little bit quicker. So when you mm-hmm. drink a Gatorade or something like that with a bunch of sugar, you're, that sugar is just running straight through. Whereas if you eat something, it kind of digests slower, and it and it works through your body, and it doesn't kind of cause that irritation to your stomach sometimes. Um, but as far as, like, get, drinking Gatorade during your workout, I would say that that's, that's good. That's fine. All right. All right. That's all my questions. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got, too. Hey, you know, we really appreciate you coming on, you know. Yeah. Trying to grow. You know? yeah, appreciate, yeah. appreciate you guys having me on. It was, uh, yeah. it was cool. Thanks for coming. Definitely stay in touch.